Hello, how are you doing? We have a wonderful recipe for you today. It's a similar recipe to a wine I made earlier this month, last month even. It is a rose petal mead. I made a rose petal wine and it's looking beautiful it is. It has such a lovely rosy glow to it. It's looking amazing. The link to it is up above and down in the description if you fancy checking it out. But this really is such a delicious, tasty, amazing mead. We should get on and make the rose petal mead. Shall we? Come on then. I'm really going through a phase at the moment of making a lot of mead. I'm really going through a phase at the moment of making a lot of mead. There is something so romantic about using honey to make your beverages from. There's two basic parts to this recipe. The first is to make up your honey solution. The second stage is to flavour it with your rose petals. Oh, yes. So we're going to work on the honey stage first. Shall we? We are using three pounds of honey, or that's about a kilo and a half of honey. I am using shop-bought honey. If I had my way, I would love to use local honey. However, I don't think anyone here on ED keeps bees. There's a few people on some of the islands keeping bees, but it's so hard to get hold of. But I would love my own beehive one of these days. Anyway, three pounds, one and a half kilos of runny honey. And I am also using two pints of compressed rose petal leaves. I picked these earlier from the garden this morning and they were smelling so delicious, such a great fragrance coming off them. It's best to pick your rose petals for your wines and your meads when they have the best aroma, which is normally first thing in the morning. So I went out early and picked them. But they are the two main ingredients for the rose petal mead, honey and rose petals. Right, first thing we need to do is decant the three pounds of honey into a saucepan. I always like to rinse out my honey pots with boiling water and get every last drop of that honey out. After all, it ferments. You paid for it, it's your honey, you may as well drink it. So, boiling water into the pots, then into your saucepan. Bonza. When it comes to mead making, you really don't want to be skimping on the quality of your honey. Ideally, use local honey because it's great for your health. It gives you the immunity and the resistance to all the pollen in the air in your local environment, it does. The quality of the honey does also play a great part in the flavour of your mead. If you scrimp and use El Chipo honey, as I am right here right now, you can taste it. A more expensive honey does make for better results. However, you have to ask yourself why you're making mead. Are you making mead because you enjoy a glass of it, or a bottle of it, or a gallon of it? Or are you really going out to make the finest you can actually make? I enjoy a glass of mead. My friends enjoy a glass of mead. So I try to make mead with the costs being as low as I can, just so I can make more of it and share more around. If I were to make an extra special batch, if I knew there was a wedding coming up in a year's time, or a big event where I really wanted to show off and create an extra special, I would splash out a bit more and buy a better, better quality honey. A local honey. But there is a difference in the quality of the honey. But that's down to your personal preference. Explore, experiment and find the honey that suits your taste buds. I always keep the jam jars as well from honey and jam. Great to put pickled eggs in. Great for your chutneys and your preserves. If you're keen on home brew and wine making, I, I really suggest you also get into 
preserve making, making condiments, making your jams, chutneys, jetties, preserves. It's all a similar method. It's all a similar vein. Why not experiment in the kitchen fully? Don't just make your home brew. If you're making your home brew, then there's nothing better than serving it with some homemade bread, some homemade cheese, and some homemade chutney as well. Go all out, really impress people with it. Show off your culinary skills. Go the whole hod, why not? Fantastic. Anyway, now that all of your honey is in the saucepan, you want to pour over four litres of boiling water. And then simply ignite your stove. Bring your honey and water to the boil and let it simmer away for about 20 minutes, half an hour or so. You may see some scum rising to the surface and forming on top. That's perfectly fine. That's just any scummy things that are rising to the top. If you want, grab a metal spoon and just skim it off. It doesn't really affect the mead at all. Some people leave it in, some people remove it. It's your personal choice. So, you want to now bring that to the boil, hunky dory, and whilst that boils away, you can prepare the next stage, which is the rose petals and everything else that you need to add for the mead. Fantastic. So what we need now is a fermenting bucket, a big one or a little one, depends which you have. I only have big ones. And then pour in your rose petals into it. Do wash them off first. I did earlier, just before I poured them in. Just give them a quick wash off under the tap. Get rid of any other bugs of any sort. Happy days. I'm using a combo of red, pink and white rose leaves. They're the colours I have in the garden. If you have any other colours, use them. It shouldn't really matter. However, if you only use white rose petals, you won't get that rosy glow to the mead, which really, really brings the the glass and bottle to life, I think. So try and use some red, some pink, whatever colours you have, fine, go for it. I've never ever tried yellow rose petals. On top of your rose leaves, your rose petals, you want to add a really good squirt of lemon juice, equivalent to about one whole lemon. I prefer the stuff in a bottle, it keeps in the cupboard for ages, although it never lasts in my cupboard. I always use it for wine making or honey and lemons. Got one lemon's worth of lemon juice. Give it a squirt in. Then all you need to do is wait for your honey solution to come to the boil and then carry on boiling for about 20 minutes. And then I'll be right back with you now. Tidy. Once your meat has been boiling for a while, about half an hour or so, you simply want to pour it over your rose petals and your lemon juice into your fermentation bucket. Just pour it straight over. Awesome stuff. That's how to do it. And then give it a really good stir. And the fragrance of the honey and the roses really come through and smells so divine it does. Give it a really good stir. Get all the aroma mixed in and the colouring from the rose leaves, rose petals. And then simply Set it aside and allow it to cool to near room temperature. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Amazing, fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to put dinner on and I'll be back after dinner when this is cool and I'll see you soon. Brilliant. Once your honey and rose petals have come down to a room temperature, you want to add your yeast you do. I'm using a mead yeast from Cross My Loof but you can use any yeast. If you can use a yeast that works well with honey and mead, that is awesome. You may want to also add some yeast nutrients because honey and meads are quite finicky at getting started. You might have a stuck ferment if you don't add enough nutrients. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna add the yeast, just pour it straight in. Happy days. And then, Put your lid on it and leave it to stand for three days. Happy days. Somewhere warm. Leave it to stand for three days in a warm place and then we'll come back to it and carry on with the process. See you soon. Well, hello, how are you doing? 
three days have passed and now it's time to put your bro's hip mead into your demijohn. Very simple to do. You just strain out all of those lovely rose petals and pour them into your demijohn. Fantastic stuff. I'm using a brown demijohn because I find that the brown demijohns really help preserve the colour of the rose petal mead. You don't see these online very often. They don't tend to be made much or sold very often because they are a right butter to clean. With the colour being so dark, you can't tell what sediment's in the bottom. You can't tell how dirty it might be on the inside. Not very well anyway. But then if you blitz it with bleach and boil in water and sterilise it to buggery, you'll be fine. You can, you can tell. You make it clean. Easy. Anyway, I prepared this one earlier. So now we need to extract those rose petals for the compost heap. Hello. And then put the juice the liquid, that lovely honey mead, into the demijohn. So come on, that's the next step. The rose petals are smelling divine. Oh, such an aroma, Turkish delights coming through. So, so sweet. And there's a lovely fizz of the yeast working. I love that sound, I love that smell. It's <laughs> So now the rose leaves are extracted, we just need to pour it straight into the demijohn. So grab your demijohn and a cling funnel. If you don't have a brown demijohn, that's absolutely fine. What you can do is wrap up a clear demijohn in newspaper or brown paper. Just give it a simple wrap, keep the light out and it will do your red wines, your, your flower wines and petal wines really well. It would just stop the UV light from the sun penetrating through the glass and affecting the colour and the flavour of the wines. Fantastic. Or you could make a really funky knitted demijohn cover. It would keep them warm whilst they ferment and keep the light out. So now that your mead is in the demijohn, all you need to do is top it up to the neck with water if you don't have enough liquid and then and then insert an airlock <laughs> and set it aside for a few more weeks carry on fermenting let it bubble away until it's time to rack and let it mature Meads generally take about a year or so to mature. It's one to lay down and forget about and mature, but in a year's time, you'll be so amazed and surprised. It's fantastic. Why don't you check out some other meads that I have made? Up by here. See you soon now. Have fun. Bye-bye.